granted so easily. So John uh, 4 and verse 21, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me that the hour comes when you will neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You, you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship because salvation is of the Jews. The hour has come and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth because the Father seeks such as worship him. God is spirit. This is key. God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit. Well, you can't worship him in spirit and truth without a relationship with him. Impossible, as they say in Spanish. So this is so key. Worship is the result of knowing him. You can't love someone you don't know. You can't worship someone you don't know. And you know, uh, I love what it says in the Psalms, uh, Psalm 100. And uh, so much, there's so much in the Bible about this. But I want to read this one, uh, verse 4 and 5. It says this, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, be thankful to him and bless his name. Because the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. So his mercy is released when we worship, immediately. That's why David wrote, his mercy is everlasting it, and his truth endures forever. So God's mercy is the reason prayer is answered. All right, number three. Number three is we have to know God's will concerning a matter before we pray it. Because if we pray something that isn't God's will, no go. So this is the confidence, 1 John 5, 14. This is the confidence we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he'll hear us. And once we know he's heard us, then we, we will receive the petition. The, the answer will come. So God has promised that prayer will move mountains. But we must make sure that we pray for the right mountains to be moved, you know. So, okay, prayer will move mountains, but what mountains uh, did God promise to move? Some of them he hasn't promised to move. So we have to pray according to, to his will. And don't forget, God has a perfect will, Romans 12, 2. He, has, he also has a permissive will, Psalm 1, 1 or 6, 15. So God's permissive will brings harm. And sometimes people want something so bad that is not promised by the Lord that uh, God says, okay to them, I'll do it. But what happens later is leanness in their life, leanness in their soul and punishment. Now, relationship, to know God's perfect will, relationship is the key. If we're living, anyone living in disobedience, he is really out of touch with God. And you cannot know God's will then. Uh, even though you, 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 may, you may seek it hard, like Saul, you know, he sought God's will so hard, but because there was no relationship, God dismissed him. That's in 1 Samuel 28. Remember, he, he sought God's will and finally had to go to a witch because God just wouldn't talk to him. Why? Well, there was no relationship with God. So what did David say? If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord just won't hear me. Psalm 66, 18. If I entertain sin, if I love sin, it's not going to go nowhere. So God's will is dependent on obedience. God's will, knowing God's will, is dependent on relationship and on, you know, walking with God uh, without sin ruling your life. Because if, if there is sin in your heart or if you love sin, you'll, you'll never discover God's will anyways. Number four, another secret to, to uh, prayer that has power is daily prayer. Luke 11, 3, give us this day our daily bread, day by day our daily bread. So uh, successful prayer means daily contact. So now listen, listen, this is really important. When a, when a man's spiritual life begins to fall apart, it's because they, there's no daily contact with God. And God can only work with those who have daily contact with him. So when you pray daily, you, you, you actually build in heaven a substance of prayer, like, like a, an account stored up for you in glory. 
that God will release the power at the proper time. Um, remember, the, it says in Revelation 8.3, the prayer of the, of the saints arose before God like incense. That was, you know, stored up prayer. So when we pray daily, we store up answers that come at the right time. Believe me, this is really very important. So Daniel, in Daniel 6.10, it talks about how Daniel prayed daily. Three times a day, in fact, he prayed. Why? Because he did not wait till a problem arose. He kept daily contact with God, whether there was a problem or not. And so he had, you know, stored up incense, stored up power. So when there was a problem, God took care of it without him crying out for it. Look at Psalm uh, 55, 17. This is key. Daily prayer. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he will hear my voice. Wow. So three times a day. Now, so when we pray, we really do need to take this seriously. Make it a habit to pray three times a day. You don't have to spend hours in prayer. You know, spend an hour in the morning, 15, 20 minutes in the afternoon, and a little bit longer at night. You'll see such results in your life. It'll amaze you. So here's, uh, here's another one. So not... Uh, not only uh, daily, but here's number five. Number five is the blood. The blood of Jesus. We can't enter into prayer, true prayer, without entering through the blood. Hebrews 10, 19 through 20, and Hebrews 4, 16. It says we enter through a new and living way, through the blood of the Lamb. So in approaching the Lord, 